Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. I wanna talk a little Baltimore Texans. Listen, the Texans had 11 penalties, only 10 first downs. CJ Stroud only had 22 minutes time of possession. So I, I think it's one of those, it's, it's, they had a great game plan. And after about halftime, your game plan only works so far against Lamar Jackson. He disengages from the game plan. They make yeah. alterations at half, and you're just – it's just he's too hard to stop. I think the Texans like Green Bay. They – Green Bay just needs a year of seasoning. The Texans need another draft class and another free agency class. They need about six more guys, which, by the way, Baltimore hit on in the last draft. Seattle's hit on easy quarterback. But it, it, you can really go get – you the know, Texans, I think the Texans have the most cap space this offseason. Yeah. They they need to go buy um a couple of players and the they, they need depth in the draft yeah. and a couple of frontline starts stars. I think their future is great. But I, I gotta tell you, when I look when I watched Baltimore, because CJ Stroud's a real quarterback, Baltimore made Goff look horrible. Uh Baltimore beat Matt Stafford. Baltimore made CJ Stroud look really small. You start Baltimore humiliated uh, Miami, Tua and Mike McDaniel, and Kyle Shanahan. If you start looking at this schedule, I mean, Baltimore has gone into the teeth of brilliant coaches, great run games, highly effective, potent offenses, star quarterbacks, and made them look awful, like regularly. If Baltimore, Baltimore, it maybe isn't the Seahawks team that went to the Super Bowl back-to-back. Remember that team that was so talented? Their secondary is not as good as that team, but it's not. Some similarities. It's not. But I got to tell you, when I watched them, that Roquan Smith move, I had real doubts about. You put him next to Patrick Queen. Home run. I am watching after this draft and Zay Flowers. I'm like, they're doing this without Mark Andrews, the tight end, who probably comes back. This is one of the better rosters. I mean, and also, yeah. it's not that just that you have a quarterback. You have a superstar quarterback with this roster. And a, and a, I mean, we could have a John Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, national champion, Super Bowl champ. When I look at this Baltimore team, even compared to San Francisco's roster, I think I think they're a little twitchier. I think um, I think they're significantly better at quarterback. I I think we've undervalued Baltimore because we paid so much attention to San Francisco's roster and Mahomes and Allen. I think I think Baltimore could beat Kansas City badly. I, I'm just blown away by their physicality, their explosiveness, their twitchiness. Yeah, like like I said, you got to be careful betting against Andy and Mahomes. The Ravens should win this game. Yes. Right? They, they, think about the Chiefs who depend on Kelsey a lot. Well, they got two star linebackers and Kyle Hamilton who are made to, you know, negate that player. Yep. And then they have a defensive line full of massive humans that can slow down Pacheco. And clearly, I, I think the one reason I was hesitant, because, okay, let's see Lamar do it. In that first half, you go, well, D'Amico's one of the best defensive coordinators. We're yes. really throwing him off. And then even Lamar said, we went at halftime, we started cussing each other out, and then he settled down, and he looked exactly like the MVP of the regular season. Yes. You're like, okay, if he's going to play like that, to me, they would be the favorite to win this whole thing right now. Because, like you said, top to bottom, they can run the ball. Their quarterback is I mean, I think the best runner of the football we've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, Zay Flowers has added an element there that completely has taken their offense. changed. And then they have this other kid, 80, they got a couple years ago. Yeah, the tight end, who's fantastic. And it's just like, oh my God. It, it's, um, and it's defensively, Andrews they're so, they're so powerful. He, I think he was, you know, he's kind of coming back, but they're kind of hesitant. They, they might not even need him. I mean, you could argue that they don't even need him right now. So their defense, is just so physical. They're what I think we thought the Niners were early in the season, who clearly are not. They hit so violently. Their they're, they're two linebackers are absolutely everywhere. Everywhere. And the confidence and the edginess, that, that's one thing that those teams, like early, what, like 15 years ago, when Harbaugh and Tomlin got there, those two teams, it was like the, the Ravens and the Steelers just looked differently, and yeah. they carried themselves differently. It's why both teams could give this the Patriots some trouble, right? And they did. That some of those Ravens team beat the the Patriot yeah. team with that Moss era team. And this team, you know, is not as famous. There's no Ed Reed or Ray Lewis on the team, but they feel like they got a similar swag. Yes. And this quarterback, they know no one has that. 
So yeah, yeah I mean, I, you know, I don't know how if they are in the Super Bowl, they are not. They definitely be favored against the Lions. And I know someone, my guy at the Action Network, told me they would technically be an underdog based before these games against the Niners. I don't see how they wouldn't be favored against the Niners. They already beat just, us. Yeah, badly. You know, it, it's funny when they went and got Roquan Smith. Because I remember saying on the air on FS1, I'm like, you can't pay linebackers this in Chicago. But Chicago didn't have their offense right. And, you know, Baltimore, because they know what they are, like all great organizations, they know what they are. They went and spent a ton on a linebacker. Yeah. He's totally changed their defense. If you look at the numbers before Roquan Smith got there and now, totally changed. We all knew he was a great player. He was a great player in Chicago, but they had to fix yeah. offense for Justin Fields. They couldn't pay a linebacker. They had to see if they could get, if Justin Fields could play. So they had to change their spending. Well, if you looked at Baltimore, Baltimore's like, we know we're going to score. We scored 27 points with Lamar. We're going to stop people and nobody can get good corners anymore. So I think Baltimore has a little bit of an old school feel with dominating, bruising linebackers, kind of a run first offense and kind of a 1980s culture with Harbaugh. It's, it's just a tough physical element. Well, one thing, uh, you know, I know you know him, Daniel Jeremiah, who I worked with with the Phillies, been on the NFL Network forever, worked for Ozzie Newsome for a long time. And they used to have this thing like play like a raven. And clearly that meant be a tough SOB. And they have these guys, the history of their franchise, right, went from Ozzie Newsome now to DaCosta, who is an yeah. Ozzie Newsome guy. So the culture has never changed. They've always liked – think about the wide receivers they used to go after, like Anquan Bolden, Steve Smith. Ro yeah. Think about when they drafted people like, wait, you're taking Kyle Hamilton? Well, yeah, that guy is a raven, right? Big, can hit, can cover. And they know exactly – like part of being a good organization is more than just coaching. It's also personnel identifying the right guys they're going to work in your culture. And they're as good as anyone in the league. And you watch him, even Lamar. Think about his – the way he carries himself as a player, his toughness, his – willingness to do whatever it takes like to me that's an underrated characteristic of his ability because he throws touchdowns he's so fast he can do all these crazy moves but when I think of Lamar I think a tough dude you know yeah. and a guy that goes right now with Mahomes and Josh Allen can play in this weather but it's not like Lamar's from New York City right he he's completely unfazed by the weather so yeah they have a toughness and a physicality to him that that always works in the playoffs right that's one thing in the playoffs why did the Bucs just kind of survive for a couple weeks? Because defensively, their coordinators throwing guys or hitting people, they're tackling. Like, it, this isn't college football, right? You can't just score a bunch of points. You get in these weather games. You get in these games. Some of those tackles today with the Chiefs and the, the Bills, like, how do these guys get up? It looked like guys broke their necks. And then, like, two plays later, they'd be back in the game. So th there's a level of physicality in the NFL that I it's clear gets amped up once the middle of January comes. And the Ravens have that in spades. Yeah, Lamar Jackson is almost the antithesis of Russell Wilson, where Russell is sort of polished. Some think it's inauthentic and never truly close. You know, you always feel like he's almost a politician in a locker room. Like it was shocking to see that picture with Pete Carroll's party that Russell was there, right? Right. Lamar's the opposite. He he just is so honest at the podium. He's so honest with his emotions. And everybody loves him. Like, yeah. not every quarterback is beloved. I mean, Brady always, I always thought, did a great job. He could chug beer with Gronk, or he could really go academic with um, Josh McDaniels. Um, he could be tough. Uh, you know, he, he there were so many elements to Tom that he always understood as he aged to connect with young guys. Even, even Aaron, Peyton, Peyton Sneaky had that quality, too. He was good yeah. at it. I don't know if there's a player. I mean, these quarterbacks all make money. I don't think there's a player in the league that plays quarterback that his teammates love more than Lamar. Like he just feels like Baltimore, a yeah. little rough, totally authentic, unapologetic. Um, it's, he's just such a, you know, it's, it's, I always laugh when people, you know, I'll, I'll get dinged and people, Oh, you didn't think so-and-so was going to be any good. Well, first of all, nobody knows Christ. The GMs don't know. Everybody passed yeah. on, you know, Brady six times and Brock Purdy seven times. Everyone passed on Lamar. The, the, the Ravens passed on him. They took another guy in the first round. <laughs> yeah. But the, the thing is about Lamar that I always appreciate about Baltimore is that Baltimore said, listen, we're going to just build a totally different offense. We're just going to, we're going to hire a coordinator. We're not going to be great at receiver. And it's just like, it, it, it really is. Most organizations don't have the courage to do that. You know, Harbaugh was in big trouble. He puts him, I mean, Harbaugh's, Lamar saved his job. And so I think there's this loyalty with John Harbaugh. It's like, 
we're just going to make it work. We're just going to figure out the, well, he can't throw. Okay. We're, we're going to run it more. And then we're going to get more receivers. I mean, they missed on some receivers now. They, they had Big some time. draft picks they missed on. And I think it, it's a great, Lamar's a great example when, when an organization just says, okay, this guy's different, but he's our different. Like I had a friend that used to live in New York. He said, yeah, I know it's a pain in the ass, but it's my pain in the ass. I'm from New York. They just yeah. said, Lamar, we're going to be here for you. And we're going to figure a way to use your superhuman skills and I, I think it's just emboldened the whole culture that it is so pro Lamar. I also think one thing's clearly changed in the sport of football. Steve Young used to always say this, that the, you know, for running quarterbacks, the way that they were eventually going to take the next step was to become a great pocket passer. Cause that's always what won in the playoffs in the eighties and nineties. Well, you watching Josh Allen, even Mahomes today busted off like a 40 yard run, right? Yeah. Lamar yesterday, like that translates what he was doing. If he's right. going to pass, because he's also much more under control, I feel, now when he, he runs than he was three or four years ago. The game slowed like, down for him. The game's definitely slowed down, but these quarterbacks are so athletic and and the hitting on the quarterbacks, right? In Steve's day, if he ran like some of these guys, they, they would have tried to kill him, like legitimately. Yeah. They, they, they would have not sent him to the blue tent. They would have sent him to the hospital. And that's not allowed in the game. And these defensive players know it. So that's a huge advantage for these quarterbacks, like Lamar, like Josh Allen, that the physicality of the hits and definitely the cheap shots, like when you're sliding, they have to not touch you. So yeah. you can run and Lamar's pretty good at just getting down. He's not taking these enormous Steve Atwater, John Lynch shots where he's nope. laying there and you think he's going to die. He's getting up. He doesn't even look like he's sweating sometimes. So well, he also, he put on about 15 pounds. Remember the first year he came in his MVP year. You're like, Oh, his traps. He's bigger. Yeah. And he keeps doing, he's gotten a little bigger and stronger every year. So, you know, Michael Vicks talked about this, like he got a hit his second year and he's like, yeah, this, this stuff's punitive. Lamar pretty quick. I mean, Lamar is really, um, and this is what the great ones do. He was great when he came into the league, but he's just added elements. Like he's better in the pocket to your point. He's less frenetic. He's gotten thicker. Um, now he's a full fledged pocket quarterback whenever he wants to be. Oh, well, he's very accurate now. Very accurate. So it's like he was always good, but I think sometimes we forget, John. This is also a developmental league. They don't; yeah. these guys don't come in as is is like fully formed, refined, sandpapered players. Like Lamar's taken real leaps here in like three. His body, his anxiety, his pace, and, and you remember his first year and a half. He didn't really know how to slide. He was taking no. shit, and I mean, like he still he doesn't. Was, he just kind of plops down, but he's good at it. <laughs> he, he's good at it. like Michael Vick. <laughs> Michael Vick's one of the most spectacular players in NFL history to watch. Yeah. But he had this quality that he would almost turn into a defensive player when he ran and try to prove his toughness and take on. And he couldn't slide either, but he yeah. couldn't even hit the ground and he would take on shots and he broke ribs. He got injured a lot. Lamar, for a very, very tough guy, we don't need you to prove your toughness. Uh, avoid everything. And it, right. that's, I, I'd argue, one of his great skills is being at, and this is, I mean, he's probably one of the top five athletes in the NFL. When two guys are coming at full speed, he can just hit the ground. And they both miss him. Because yeah. if you do take a shot and you break a rib, the Ravens would be in major trouble. He knows that. I'm sure he's told that all the time. And now he's just, you know, he's just completely confident of his speed relative to defensive speeds. Now, the one thing with the Chiefs, and you saw it tonight, their DBs hit, right? I mean, Justin Reed, Eric Reed's brother, <laughs> is throwing his shoulders Sneed. around. All the corners hit. So you got to be, and we'll see Willie Gay's situation, Bolton. I mean, it, they're, they're back seven will throw their body around. So I yeah. would imagine that's a point this this whole week in Baltimore. Let's be very, very careful and pick our spots. Get out of bounds, extra couple yards, live to fight another down, because we cannot, because they're going to come after him, right? Anytime he's running Spagnola, old school coach, right? Well, he, he's made history for killing Brady. They're, they're going to come after him when he's running around. So I, I would imagine part of the game plan is going to be beating them through the air, which he's proven he can do now, which makes him an unstoppable player.